you alive. <laughs> uh, this week is all about Dr. Nick, and therefore he's there. My on unknown own. part, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Raw Pet Medics. Uh, we're going to be talking about me, which is fascinating, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody's um, absolutely delighted with that. Um, I can only see me on the screen, which is slightly disconcerting because uh, when I can't see you two guys, I just worry. You're a bit like three year olds. If I can't see you, I don't know what Moody. you're up to. Oh, so yeah. so <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Lovely to see Bianca and Fiona. And hello, Gemma. Um, and there's Bren. Very good. Now that I can see you, I feel a lot more comfortable. I don't know what we were saying about him. <laughs> That's a very nice professional picture of you there, Nick, sitting in the chair with the dog. Uh, when when did you take that? Is that a is that a new promo I, shoot I, you did? did I, yeah, I did a little shoot in London. Oh yeah, about Ooh, three London. four years ago. I I no, it, it didn't really come out very well because um, the, 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 the 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 photo is good and what have you, but. Look at the expression. I was trying to get this dog to do something, and the photographer clicked every time I was going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this. Yeah. And so, See, the first thing I thought when I saw that picture, one, well, somebody said it on the Facebook thing. That's not his dog. Uh, the, true, the, the true. Second, Before we had our dogs, second, actually. The second thing I said to my lovely wife, Chris, who chose that photo of you, Nick, um, was. Do you know, that's exactly how he dances. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, that's a little bit later on in the evening. I'm quite, I'm quite smooth and, and they, uh, they do graceful the, earlier, the, my friend. The photographers, yes, uh, yes, indeed. They like a, they like an odd picture. They like an odd expression. Like, but I, I did had to do something to get a few photographs of the website, and I'm looking at the photographs, going, "Dear God, I look really tired because I, you know, I got the two young kids at home. It's like I look 42, which is the age I am." And he goes, "Well, that's what you look like." And I said, "Well, you're going to have to do something about that because I look like." I just woke up uh, and then the pictures he picks out I'm like oh and uh, and he goes oh wonderful expression in that one I was like don't pick that one like pick a normal one and he goes that's what invites people in a normal photograph I said I don't I'm not looking for normal I'm looking for airbrushed like perfection and he goes I don't think that's the message you're trying to push out so I had all these expressionful pictures on my website that I wouldn't be totally happy with either. So I feel your pain, Nick. Uh, that's photographers, yes, maybe. They see something we yeah. don't. Does it look like a nurse has approached you with a rubber glove from behind? Is that what you're saying, <laughs> Connor? It does. <laughs> I just sat on something rather uncomfortable in that chair. Yeah. The dog was great, though. The dog was, 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 was playing to cue the whole time, but um, I was uh, struggling to no, so try I think get it right. Look, the the colours are nice and stuff. Listen, guys, we're, we are on patreon.com forward slash raw pet medics that's where you can find us uh, and we really appreciate anybody that is there helping us out price of a cup of tea or coffee uh, or even a pint every month would be fantastic it helps us keep things going on this side of the fence and uh it, it is most appreciated if you can if you can't no problem times are hard about to get a bit harder coming into winter as all the talk is at the moment so we totally yeah. understand so we do appreciate anything you, you can do and no problem if you can't but raw pet medics on patreon.com is where you'll find us um so I yeah like to sh i share something amazing um we have just between us literally about two minutes ago worked out that we are available as a podcast on audible Apple, Acast, Spotify, and most of the common podcast providers. So cool, if you it? like what you're hearing, you can you can hear. We've got 71 on YouTube. I just looked today. We've got 71 vids on YouTube. No way. And a majority of those are going to be podcastable, and you'll be able to use those when you go take the dog for a walk, if you fancy us in your ears Yes. when you take the dog for a walk. Ooh. So be careful. Ooh, be careful funny. what you that's cool. I like that idea. I like that we're on Spotify as well. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. So, uh, well done, us. Yeah, it's frightening yeah, that we could all... be coming on the walk with you. That's the downside. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the worst, what are we talking about tonight? Anything interesting? No, uh, not really. Uh, yeah. no. I don't know. I mean, there was this there, there was this guy who kept posting pictures of. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to have to just so it's just to so it's it's large enough. And um, come on, Nick, you can. We're just hidden that... picture wise. But just this, so that okay. this is him. <laughs> Explain. So guys, Good picture. So she, so I just read a, a text from somebody. Um, so <laughs> it was, I, was, I was 55, I hasten to add, 55 uh, on Friday, Friday the 9th, 9th of the 9th, that's my birthday. And, um, and Ellie, to my great surprise, got me this fantastic 
uh, number plate. It's NT Go Raw. I read it as 60 Raw and thought, oh, 60 Me too. Oh, mommy, she's five years out. <laughs> out, out. My yeah. wife is five years out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but actually, what well, if we can, if it's legal, we're going to put a little rivet just on this on the beginning of the, 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 the loop of the six to make yeah. it look like a G. So it says NT Go Raw. So yeah. I hope you like that. I oh, love it. Okay. I absolutely, I've, I've always Not thought that I'm, I'm into advising about illegal things with, you know, people in the better side of the law within the family but you can't put a rivet yes. in the wrong place but what you might do is one of your children may accidentally stick a little play sticker on your number uh, plate yeah um, okay. by accident that, that you knew nothing uh, about that could be peeled okay. off yes <laughs> i think yes. a bird poo you could hold you could hold a budgie and squeeze them <laughs> get bird poo on it that'd be perfect <laughs> Um, don't, don't believe this at home, folks. <laughs> yeah. So, so Nick, you're so you're, you're 55 now. So, uh, do you want to just kick us off about a little bit about yourself? Because you know, uh, you've been kind of one of the longest heads doing this, really. Uh, certainly in the UK. Um, certainly that I know of. You were the very first person I ever saw talking about this. Do you want to start? Start. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start? Where do you start? I'll tell you what. I, let's start at the beginning because I've been. I, I, I haven't scripted this in the slightest. But I have just been thinking about what, where are my influences? And I think one of the biggest, do you like my T-shirt, by the way? Very cool. Yeah. Hopefully it says raw in your, your screen, not raw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that would be unfortunate <laughs> and not the totally message. appropriate, but, uh, not. <laughs> anyway, so, so I've just been thinking about it. It's, it. And I think it comes from my parents. My dad was a doctor. My mum was a nurse. And so uh, both were very compassionate and very, uh, you know, uh, with it, medically literate. Um, but I think my mum came from a very compassionate point of view, and she was very interested in in homeopathy and um, essential oils, and uh, personal development, and you know that all that kind of deep kind of spiritual psychological stuff. And my dad, he he he, he did. Uh, he's he's a. Um, my mother, by the way, was seventh of twelve from a, 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 a family in Galway. And my father was raised as a, you know, in a kind of conservative Methodist Sunderland, uh, you know, just very traditional way. He's a grammar school boy, but he, he, he did physiology at Leeds and then he got a scholarship to do medicine at Magdalen. So, you know, quite a bright boy. And he came from a much more kind of intellectual space, but they met in the middle. It, you know, both thinking about medicine and how the body works and how can we make the bed, the, med, the, the, the body work best. But one was kind of very slightly more touchy feely and, and uh, you know, about simpatico. And the other was much was more from a from a kind of intellectual perspective. And I think I'm kind of smack bang in the middle of that. So I feel that that is where I got. That's one of the major reasons that I'm here today doing what i'm doing that i'm not doing the intellectual i'm not a, a conventional vet doing whatever it might be i'm not working in a university doing whatever they do there which we all know about but you know and i'm not a spiritual healer or reiki master although great respect and kudos to people who are so i'm kind of sitting somewhere between and so on reflection i think that, that that's um there's a lot going there and the other thing so that one of the guiding principles is that is that use your head use your heart come together and we all, i grew up with animals rode horses as, as, as a kid in a really bad way and hated it uh and we had dogs and we had cats and we had rabbits and we had hamsters and you know all the, the whole whole nine yards and the other thing was it was very much it was grew up and as we all do but i think i really took this to heart was to do the right thing no matter what do the right thing so when i so if we jump forward and i'm not going to be talking for 45 minutes guys i promise i'm going to let you get away uh when when i was i qualified in 92 from from edinburgh and uh within a year i was very interested in homeopathy because i just thought oh my god there's so many cases that just keep on coming back and i just can't you know i can't cure them what can i do there's much more to this than meets the eye and i think we've discussed that before but um then when i discovered raw food 
within a few years of really settling into that idea and developing my, my ideas in homeopathy and in, in natural medicine, um, I, I just thought raw food really is where it's at. And, and therefore, I would feel bad if I didn't let as many people know as I could, because it's obvious, it's stunningly obvious that feeding a species appropriate diet is the key way to fundamental health. You know, if, if you feed a really bad diet, a really good diet, but you over vaccinate and you use too many chemicals and, you know, the dog is really, really stressed, then you're not going to make, you know, uh, you're not going to be super, super healthy. But if you've got the diet in some kind of good shape and you're giving plenty of variety, then that is the foundation for really taking off from the food point of view so there you go those for me after a, a week's thought is, is these are the two influences do the right thing no matter what and this kind of head and heart uh, approach to medicine there you go that's it we can go to the pub now <laughs> Go on. That was... that's it. That's it. And so just asking, so where did you where did you start out? Was this right? Is this where you first started? Did you start it's, a little uh, bit further afield? Well, What's your... yeah, no, it's really, really good. And um, Lizzie, uh, 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 not Lizzie, uh, Christina Duran, who who was, a, was one of my, if, 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 can you see Christina Duran? Yeah. She's uh, 20 down there. It's a big, big paragraph. Thank you, Chrissy. That's really fantastic. So she was a client and she was one of some, some of my first visualists. And then she moved to, to Canada and she, she's been she's been a fan of supporting the Facebook group and, and sending visual clients to me ever since. So thank you very much. A million thanks, Chrissy, to you. Um, so. Uh, so I, I started in Yorkshire in. Let's have a look. I started in Yorkshire in uh, 1992. And it was in a, in a pig practice because that was the only only place I could find. But actually, I learned a lot about preventative medicine because the thing is, you don't want to spend money making pigs better. You want to try and keep get them better and keep them better. Getting the the, the diet, getting the diet right, getting the, the the housing right, getting the stress levels right, and everything else. So actually, that was really formative with 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 health. What's health about? It's about getting it right keeping it right as opposed to fixing it so started in yorkshire there in um in uh just near bridlington and then uh after 18 months there i moved to helmsley they call it Hem hemsley but it's helmsley if you're a soft southerner and that's in the dales the yorkshire dales so the next 18 months i spent bombing about in the yorkshire dales in this little um subaru justy little fit four-wheel drive thing up and down the dales i was going up 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 the dales so high up the dales you know we would do a tb test once a year those in those days i think and i would be the only vet they would see from one year to the next because they just got on with it themselves yeah. and i learned stories about putting cobwebs on the when you dehorn cattle, you, you put cobwebs on the horn in order to promote clotting and other wonderful yeah. um, things. And they would they would serve you sandwiches cut up like like you were the queen, you know. Uh, bless her, by the way. <laughs> and and it was absolutely lovely. It was it was very very much James Harriet stuff. But during those those formative three years, yeah, eighteen months and eighteen months. I, I came to the conclusion because I did the landmark forum, which I'd love to talk to you about in a second. I did the landmark forum and I thought, do I want to be a conventional vet who has an interest in alternative medicine? Or do I want to be a real alternative practitioner who is gunning for health and vitality with a minimum of conventional intervention and guess what being the extremist that i am i thought i can't do i can't do the compromise thing so uh and, and the, the 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 phrase that i always say to people is that i came to the conclusion in those practices that i i, I didn't feel comfortable oh no that was a bit later when i did go to mark elliott's place so 
in Yorkshire, I came to the conclusion I wanted to be an alternative practitioner. So I moved in to the practice with Mark Elliott in Chichester. God bless him. He's an amazing practitioner. We fell out after about four years, but we made up very quickly and we're good, good buddies now. So all is well in that in that department. I only spoke to him a couple of days ago, actually. So um, there you go. So three years in Yorkshire and I decided that I wanted to be an alternative practitioner. I'd started my homeopathic training at that stage. And when within the homeopathy, I learned the phrase of um, remove obstacles to cure. And that's that was my lead oh, into good. food. I'll shut yeah. up for a second. That's cool. I love that. Uh, remove obstacles to cure. Like, uh, give us a couple of examples of that. Give me, give me an example of what you're talking about. Well, if you, if you, if you, if you're treating, uh, and this is what we used to do back in the in the nineties, we would treat with homeopathy and send them home on kibble. There's an obstacle to cure. Kibble is an obstacle yeah. to cure. Yeah. Or over vaccination. We we knew about about over. I'm not saying don't vaccinate, guys. I think it's a necessary evil in some situations. But I'm saying. Uh, over vaccination which is what we were all doing in the 90s um that's an obvious obstacle to cure i was vaccine uh critical even in those days okay i, I learned it through homeopathy through through uh being taught by mark elliott being taught at the royal london homeopathic hospital uh next to st ormond street in london did our training some training there and this is that's that's what they were talking about you know remove obstacles to cure seek that which needs to be cured also to treat the, the treat the per, treat the patient not the disease these were the philosophies that we were being taught and so i've been marinating in those concepts for 30 years I've, i'm a vet 30 years this year yeah I qualified in 92 and now it's 2022. I can't believe it. I've been a vet longer than I've not been a vet. Yeah. Which is. Which is That's mad. It's scary, is remarkable. Isn't it? it is remarkable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but yeah, really remarkable. And you realize you're getting old when the weeks start flying by and before you know it, the end of the year is coming. Christmas is on the way. It's only three <laughs> months off. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> and, it, you... and another year's gone, and your wife thinks you're 60. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> 60. Yeah. <laughs> when did you uh, when did you realize the whole raw thing? When did you first come out of the covers, uh, come, uh, break cover, and um, start okay. kind of speaking? Because you've been out the front for as long as I've known raw, which she knows no as early as you. Yeah. But so, like, when did you first break cover and say, I need to start speaking about this? This is this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Brendan and I have got a really good mate uh, um, uh, who is called Pete, who is who was the chairman of the uh, British Association of Homeopathic Veterinary Surgeons, and he came back from Australia. He was uh, he was teaching teaching ho uh, homeopathy in Australia, and he came back with this little white book. In fact, I should have got a copy just over there by this by this funny bloke called dr ian billinghurst and it was called um the bath diet and another one was called feed your uh bones and grow give your dog a bone okay so he came back with with these books and i thought uh it's not very well produced no. <laughs> publication exactly. um, but but i did read it uh, and and it's and it's quite well written. It's written in a very kind of simple and attractive way. So God bless Ian Billinghurst for making it not officious and sciencey, sciencey, and 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 you know, and, and 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 difficult to read. So he's done a wonderful job. And I mean, look, that's why we're here because of Ian Billinghurst. Let's let's face it. Anyway, he uh, he wrote he he wrote this book, and I read it, and and initially I just thought, yeah, but there's kibble and it's really convenient and it's scientifically formulated and that's what we were taught at college and therefore kibble you know but very 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 quickly and i think it was a road to damascus thing i think and this is maybe just i'm making it up because i've been through it so many times but i i think very quickly within you know in my mind, it was an overnight thing. It was like, oh, yeah, 
Yeah, I of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, in my mind, because I'm a genius, obviously. <laughs> Uh, it's it's that, uh, but I think it was probably over a couple of weeks. I just thought, yes, they're absolutely right. Yeah. Again, going back to my folks, we never ate out. We never ate processed food. We 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 uh, mum would cook every day, every night, and so processed food was 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 completely foreign to me. And therefore, it, all these little pieces came together, elimination of, of obstacles to cure, healthy food. She was a health freak. I've told these stories on the pet longevity thingy. Uh, if you if you want to laugh, have a look at that. Um, um, yeah, I was being given vitamins and minerals and supplements as a kid in the 70s. And so it all came together in the kind of the mid 90s. And when, when did I start speaking about it? Probably 98, 99. Definitely by 2000, because by 2000, I was working with Craig Taylor at Anglian Meat Products, who was the precursor for their now Nature's Menu. And so we would, we were working together. We were kind of formulating and lecturing. So that, there you go. That's actually now I think of it. That was probably when I first started. He came along and said, listen, I know you're into raw. So I must have said something about raw somewhere along the line. But he got onto that and he said, we need somebody to lecture on raw and talk to people about raw. And so we kicked off that in about 2001. Craig, you're probably not watching. You've probably got better things to do. <laughs> but... It's about then that we started. And what they did is John Bowen, you know, John Bowen, the uh, the behaviorist, he and I both went along and, and were supporting Craig in feeding species appropriate food. And so somehow I think we were both. He put us both on the back on the back saying these two veterinary surgeons strongly recommend feeding raw food. And. Uh, so my mug was on the back of a million packs of this food, which is which is my claim to fame, perhaps. But uh, it's really funny because uh, I finished with a girlfriend around that time. And she used to take great delight in every afternoon when she fed the dog and slicing through my face. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbing at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... And little did you know that tonight we have joining yeah. us live. <laughs> this is her life. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't do that to you, Nick. Wouldn't do that, that to you. Yeah. We used to chuckle because we used to be selling the stuff from uh the menu. Anglian meats. Uh, Anglian with, meat, yeah. With, with, with my mug on, on the, the back. back of it. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I used to, to, there used to be constant to comments about guy. Yeah, I wonder whether he gets away with that. How long before he gets dragged in front of the Royal College? Anyway. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, so Nature's so were one so of the, they were one of the first companies to be doing it because I don't remember that they yeah. were pretty much the only show in town. That was pretty brave of them to be sticking their neck out and investing uh, um, so much cash into that setup uh, and to be plugging along kind of on their own. There was really one, two and three companies there for a good 10 years and uh, – so that that was interesting. What uh, what was the worst? Uh, can you tell me the worst experience you had up on stage talking about raw dog food? The worst experience uh, yeah. on stage was yeah. with Brendan. Was it, we, yeah. went, we went. Yeah, it's, like, I've had I've I've had no bad experiences. I've had no bad experiences. Okay, literally, I've spoken to students. I've spoken to vets. I've spoken to I've spoken to small groups i've spoken to farmers i've spoken to the hunt and shooting brigade you name it okay uh clarky comes along and it all goes to you know what okay i'm not gonna bl actually blame him because he actually saved me it's just i somehow got onto a slightly the wrong tack with them and then they were they were winding me up with their with these questions saying well how can you possibly think raw food is a good thing if you believe in homeopathy and kind of inane and slightly yeah. questions oh. like that yeah and they just wound me up i don't think we'd eaten that afternoon because remember they had pizza <laughs> after the event it's a, oh, it? oh if that was hangriness i don't know what is i mean yeah, from was, a point and of view, i just got quite... i just got slightly pissed off okay and slightly arsy with them 
And then I had to, and then I finished my thing. I sat down and then Brendan came along and saved the show. So Brendan, thank you for that. How did he yeah, save but it? He's still, he's, ever since, ever since he's never worked with me ever again. I've never <laughs> worked with him yet no, until now when I work with him. Every week, yeah. well, we've, got, we've, got, we've got Brady as the uh, as a referee, as, so as the person good. in the middle. And so, why yeah. what did, did Brent come along? Was he a, was he a slightly more calming influence? Uh, with or like was his message? No, not really. I, I'm generally uh, I get on really well. It was just that I don't know, it was just kind of slightly the wrong crowd. And they they were, I mean, this is when 2008, 2009 or so, it's quite yeah, early, something like that, yeah, possibly. Yeah. And they were all, you know, able to text. They had a, a running Twitter feed or something. And so they were kind of feeding in yeah. to, to one of maybe one of the guys who was asking all these questions. And it was just kind of really a bit silly yeah. and a bit stupid. And yeah. I just and I think I just said to them, you know, this, yeah. this is it's a silly question. Let's concentrate on the food. It was it was that thing. They were trying to they were having a go at homeopathy, but we weren't there to talk about homeopathy. We we're there yeah. to talk about food. Yeah, yeah. And so there you go. So that's the worst. It was what I, I was on my feet for probably twenty minutes, in, and that's in my entire career of about twenty five years of raw food. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so I think it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's until cool. until tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I suppose the we've is... just plummeted. Yeah, I know. We've plummeted your practice. No, I, I mean honestly. So I'm more interested if we go back a little bit because obviously that's yeah. where you started to interact with companies. You were getting deals from them to go and speak for them and doing various bits, which I was always, you know, that's really good sort of extra business. Good gig, out, almost yeah, outside yeah. of the the, the standard. Good. Um, so where, how did you sort of develop really into that other than, you know, because you were in practice with Mark and then yeah. you left Mark's practice. And I think you yeah. were doing a bit of your own stuff, but you were using other practices. Is that right? Yes. I think you were doing one yeah, in London, one in Bristol area. Yeah, Tell us a bit I, more yeah. about that stage. Uh, uh, Brendan, you've done your homework. Yes. Um, so I, I finished with Mark. And moved to Petersfield and set up in Petersfield and was working in Salisbury at Howard Taylor's practice. I was working in London. Um, uh, I was working in London there at the Hyde Park Veterinary Centre. Uh, I was working in Purton at the Purton Veterinary Centre with uh, Vicky Gower and also in Bristol for Vale Vets. Uh, they were in, in, in Filton with Vale Vets, Andrew Prentice in London. Um, and uh, how did I get the speaking gigs? I'm not sure because vets don't usually, until you're a specialist or, you know, at least a diplomat, you tend not to stand on your two hind feet and talk about stuff because you think, oh, well, everybody else knows about this stuff. But what happened was Mark and I used to do talks because he had quite a big hall of a practice. And so what he used to do is he would invite 30, 40 clients in and talk about homeopathy. Um, and so he did one of those and inevitably he asked me as senior assistant to do the same. And so that was my first. And I found that I quite enjoyed it because as a kid, I used to have to talk in church, you know, do a reading in church. And that was my worst. Yeah, night. I hate it. I would on rather that <laughs> have, my, have, have my fingers, fingernails pulled out. I, I was really shy as a child. And actually, I think I still am to a certain extent. But I, I realized that when you're talking about something you really enjoy and hopefully you know more about it than most people in the room, it's really empowering and it's really it's a really wonderful place to be and so i really enjoyed that feeling of just teaching one or two people with one or two things and getting some lovely feedback and you know and then having to research it for the next one and then research it for the next one that's a that's a a, 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 a virtuous cycle isn't it you know it's yeah. just the more you do the better it gets and so, and yeah. Did, did to... you find it was almost like consulting, but to a larger audience? Was that that how you sort of yeah. addressed it? And so that's a really good point, actually, Bren. Consulting is acting, okay, whichever way 
you look at it, it's acting to a certain extent. The person in the consulting room is slightly different to the person who you'll meet, you know, for a coffee on a Saturday morning, slightly different. Um, and, and I guess it was a, it was an extension of that. Um, and also it's kind of getting used to people listening to you and actually believing you and taking what you say and running with it, getting, you, you know, because in normal life, you don't really convince many people of many things on a regular basis. And so there's a different psychology. You know, you're a teacher, you become a teacher. When you're a practitioner, when you're a practitioner, you're teaching one to one. But when you start talking to, pe to, to halls of people, then you start talking to more. And I think once you've done a few, you people, people are always looking for people to entertain their farm group, their, their breed group, their dog group, their what have you. And so it kind of goes from 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 one to the next. And that's to a certain extent why this is so good, because actually we're talking to lots and lots of people. Um, and therefore, we don't have to get in the car because in the old days, you know, once a week, twice a week, I get in the car, drive 50 miles, 100 miles, <sighs> do a talk for an hour or two, get back in the car and drive home. You know, and that's really draining. Yeah. Really, really mm. draining. You know, you've got you to do what you've got to do. But, and I did it because I loved it and, and still would probably do it again now. But um, uh, this is good. I really yeah. like this. It's, 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 it's relaxed and we're doing it with you guys i think what we should do is is the three of us should get on stage together for a day and do this you know and we'll, we'll you know somebody does 20 minute presentation or a half hour presentation and then we just have a little bit of banter a bit a little bit of back and forth i think that would just be really for a monty, whole day monty python style big show yeah. <laughs> exactly we and we'll have have have, have dinner the night before with with you know our patreon brigade and then maybe dinner the night after with everybody and we can all talk about raw and what yeah. we're doing and where we're going you know the last two years have been a very that all that separation yeah has been very very detrimental to us i think and so i think getting together and this is what we're trying to do within the raw feeding veterinary society if anybody wants to to join or help with the raw feeding veterinary society, if you're a vet please come along and join us we're we're we're, we're trying to re-energize the raw feeding veterinary society yeah uh so uh yeah chrissy yeah. you're right uh, Kay, uh catherine o'driscoll she got me to do some talks actually canine health concern back yeah. in the day yes mm, yeah, yeah she might. it's very good having uh uh it's very because you're having people giving you prompts because some of these people know me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you. So luckily, nothing embarrassing has come up. That's quite good. Wait till medals. Yeah. Wait till medals. I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw it too, Connor. I say, really? <laughs> yeah. Poor Connor. It's true. There's no, but there's no, there's no natural vets in Ireland. We have, you know, one in uh, in Port Marnock, Emily McAteer. You couldn't get near yeah. her for love nor money. And uh, she has a second vet there, but probably wouldn't be quite into the same um, kind of lane. But um, even then, you know, I have a list of natural vets in Ireland, but all I do to annoy them is that anytime I hear a vet, even half entertaining the idea that a pet is fed fresh food, I put them on my natural vet list. And they start getting, so I've had vets ringing me going, get me off that list. I'm not a natural vet. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Look, it, look, it makes me happy to do. It. I hear what you're saying. Like, I hear what you're saying about turning up to small ends. Like sometimes you could be, you could be going like a distance, and there might be a really, really tiny turnout. And you, like you're going to do it anyway. You're happy to do it. You're just happy that anybody wants to turn up. Yeah. But it definitely is easier and more of a buzz when it's a bigger kind of crowd. And you, you once you get up there and you start chatting, it is a buzz. It definitely is. You can see why it's mm -hmm. it's. Um, why people love doing it you can see why bands love doing it. you can see what because it is great particularly if you it's going well <laughs> there's nothing like it but uh yeah sometimes it can be a little bit tricky but uh yeah but so it's like, the feedback it's the feedback that you know bands do it because you know they play a tune and they get you get applause we do it because uh, we we talk and we get some wonderful feedback yeah and, and questions and yeah. it's not just yeah that was great thank you very much although that's very nice thank you but it's that's really interesting tell me about this yeah so and, and then you know that they're really listening you know yeah. or 
you know, um, I've heard you talk on this before. Can you please, you know, tell us a bit more about this? So that's good. It looks like, guys, I'm just looking at the uh, at the comments here. I'm just looking at the time as well. It's 1936. <laughs> uh, I won't tell the joke again. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it looks like we should, and I think we could, we could do an English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh meeting, a day's meeting. And I one. reckon... No, all of them. All as, four. In, as in one day in one and one day in another. Yeah, yeah. We'll be absolutely yeah, wrecked yeah. when it's hard on people. <laughs> no, no. I, I, <laughs> we won't make Karen, it. Karen, <laughs> back in Ireland. Karen's already said, back near the pubs too. <laughs> natural, natural. Yeah, yeah. The pubs would naturally clear because they'll all be coming to see yeah. us, obviously. That's yeah, what she's oh, trying yeah. to say, Karen Reid. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Nothing else. So what are, you, um, what, are you, what are you doing these days, Nick? I mean, you've been a kind of a, a, a solo artiste for a while. And uh, so yeah. what's... What, what, what's what do you do these days? What are your give me three or four kind of avenues today? What am I doing these days? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can tell you what I should be doing. I should be doing more uh, of my little vids, my 10, 10 minute slots. I should be doing more of those, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to use social media. I'm very bad at it. Connor, Connor you're very good at this. No. no and, and 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 I, I you know, we've got this thing called social media which i despise but it's a way of getting a worthwhile the right message yeah do the right thing getting the message out to hundreds of thousands if not millions of people and so i think i'm a fool not to i i shy away from it because social media you know it's all the all the facebook and um what's his name who runs facebook zuck Zuckerberg and you know and and Bill Gates and all that kind of stuff and these this really puts me off. We're probably going to get this closed down because of that. But um, yeah, that puts me off. But it's just a medium, isn't it? You know, I may not like polluting the environment because I drive a car, but it gets you from A to B so that you go and do a lecture. So sometimes I think the means justifies the ends, and perhaps that's kind of where I'm coming to within social media. So I'm just kind of looking into how do I do that as painlessly yeah. as possible. Um, doing this, got some talks lined up. Where I'm going to, we're going to, well, Barcelona. We've got Barcelona. All three of us are going to Barcelona. Next week. You still see clients? You still do consults? You still to I am seeing clients. I, yeah. I'm, I'm doing a lot of te telemedicine these days. I'm doing a lot of uh, nutrition work through telemedicine, seeing people with, with sick dogs, mainly uh, skin and gut problems, but also a lot of healthy dogs where people are saying, I've just started on raw. Am I doing it right? Or... I've been feeding for a while. Can you just do an MOT on my diet? And I find those really, really great because if people have committed to raw food, it's lovely to just kind of take them to the next level. So that's a really, really great thing. Uh, the two videos that I've done, they're available on the website, holisticvet.co.uk, by the way. If anybody is interested, jump into those. One's called Raw Feeding the Basics. The other one is really called good. Bones and How to Feed Them. Yeah, the raw feeding the basics is, is fantastic. It is really good for Bless people you. starting off. With, it is really good for people that have clients because your staff gets sucked in to doing half an hour talking to somebody. My vet said the dry food is going, the raw food is going to kill my dog, and your staff member is there for half an hour speaking to this person that can barely hear any words. The person saying, and that's expensive and and it's hard. It's very hard for pet shops to get the right message out sometimes. So I think those sort of courses can be really handy for people. Low barrier to entry. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. What about those? What about Dermadog? You're doing a lot of uh, doing stuff for Dermadog and whatnot. Mm. Well, my wife runs Dermadog, so I haven't really got any choice to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I had to do it. <laughs> oh, can you see? This is this is this is Dermadog just here, and if you look along here, oh, yeah. there's some Dermadog just Lovely. over there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So basically. These are products she's developed she, they're using uh, uh, organic essential oils and uh, uh, she's developed them. She, occasionally she'll ask me, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? So officially it's veterinary. I, I helped with the formulation. And the funny thing is when the, in the early days we would use the soaps on the children and so we could, we could, I'm not sure we we're able to, but what we could do is we could say, uh, 
tested on children, used on dogs. Definitely we could that. we could say that, which I think would be <laughs> yeah. a great strapline. But I, I think we'd probably get 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 done by the SPC. Well, yeah, everybody, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, but but that's it. So and that's Ellie. She's doing soaps for dogs. She's also she's now doing the pinch pots, which are kind of herb blends, which are really really nice. If people want to have a look at those, definitely jump into those. It's dermadog.com. Uh, if you want to have a look, I would imagine there are quite a number of people who are using them. Um, uh, and so if anybody's used um, Dermadog, do, do, do give a shout. Um, doing a bit of work with Karen. She's doing all the work, in fact, and uh, um, uh, with her lovely, lovely, lovely uh, Newton. Uh, so I'm very yeah. uh, honoured to be chosen as the the, 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 the the guy to do the all the work there. So thank you, Karen. Yeah, Karen speaks very um, highly of you in that regard because yeah, you know you've got yeah. all these issues, and uh, she said that uh, you are a game changer for a lot of those issues. There you go. Well, she's oh, she, yeah. she's doing a lot of work. I'm you know yeah. I, we we have a chat every now and again. She does all the work, and you know so it's great. Yeah, she's she, she's a good lass. And we'll see her in Barcelona as well, guys. Yep. Just to say, the uh, just in our last three minutes, the the conference, the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society RFVS.info. If you if you're interested in it, and you should be interested in it because they're a fantastic bunch. They're doing this the conference. If you can't make it to Barcelona, and if you can't make it to Barcelona in seven days' notice, that shame on you for 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 over prioritizing other elements of your life, but. If you can't make it to Barcelona, I totally understand that. You can get it online, and you can you can uh, have it for yourself and go through the 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 lectures yourself um, in your own time. So um, please do come along. Um, there's still some tickets left for that for the online version. So please, you're very welcome to come along to that. You're doing a talk about that, Nick. Yeah. I am doing a talk. I'm doing a talk, which is which is um, based on some of the stuff that we've been talking about and uh, some of the experience we've had with Karen and Newton about renal disease, because it's a big topic. And one of the big reasons that, 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 that kidney disease is such a big one is that raw fed dogs, as soon as they get even the slightest diagnosis of kidney disease, the vet will immediately go, oh, that's it. You've had your fun. Now you've got to feed some proper food. Here's a renal diet, okay? And they'll give some kibble, kibble for yeah. a renal dog, dry, or some tins, some tins too. So, yeah. so I think it's a really uh, because the the conference is called um, uh, what's it called? How do you know yeah. the, the food you're feeding is safe? safe or words yeah. to that effect. Yeah. What's the safety of raw food? So, so Bren is going to be talking about raw safe and other amazing things, um, and I think that that raw food can utterly be safe, if not safer, in a more extreme cases like pancreatitis and kidney disease and liver disease and heart disease and what have you, because you can, you know, you've got real nutrients going in for a start. The time that you need proper food is when you're sick. Yeah. You may, you know all the stories about people going into hospital and they're just being fed terrible food and they feel terrible. They come home, they eat some good food and they yeah, immediately feel better. So yeah. I think it's really important that we feed, uh, we feed, we feed the best food. And, you know, we'd all agree that, that raw food really is the best yeah. food uh, in, in any circumstance. So what are you going to be, what are you going to be doing in the last minute? What are you going to be doing in uh, five years? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want the Nick Thompson brand to be in five years? What do you see? I would like to be doing more, uh, more teaching. Um, I'd love to say I'd, be, I'd love to be jetting around the world, but I just I just don't think from a regenerative perspective you can justify that. You know, maybe the odd one, and we can offset it somehow. But you know, we've got this Zoom webinar technology, so I'm I'm thinking that's that's where it's going to be. It's going to be uh, you know three days a week, maybe. Doing webinars, teaching, uh, writing, maybe you know, working with with you guys, working with other partners in different countries around the world to, to just get the message out, just to broadcast the message as 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 widely and as loudly as possible. But also, really looking forward to all the research that's going to come through. Um, yeah. You know, if we think about ten years ago. There's, there's oodles of research now 
um, that we didn't have 10 years ago. So I think even if, in five years' time, because everyone's going to get everyone is excited about this and i think more and more and more research is going to is going to pour out and more and more studies showing that raw feeding is safe and and so i yeah. think the, the the future really is very very bright yeah it's enormously difficult to I, sorry brown god yeah no no and are you writing a book come on people want to know have you got uh, a book coming out to did somebody actually knock, say that knock somebody off his top spot I think you're yeah. setting up uh, somebody off his top spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I started one about three years ago, but I just found that the, 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 it was so daunting. I'm such a perfectionist. As like, I'd like Connor. Yeah. I'm such a perfectionist. Oh. I would find it horrifying to, to, to be meticulous with every line of 80 or a thousand or a hundred thousand words yeah. I, I find that really daunting so what i've done is i've taken that idea of trying to get the message out and trying to use webinars and and and, and this and back in the day we had george Orr on raw raw mm. and things like that so kind of it's it's i'm wanting to to broadcast information but i don't think that writing is is for me so you're safe on your top spot there for yeah. a while brady I, i'm never going to do it again but i do know of um some people that are in the field of writing books now and they are at it again and it's like you know if it's a huge thing to go back to it it's like it's just a it's a it's a it's a hard gig uh depending on what way you're structured i suppose and what sort of message book you want to put out but mm. i already know the sort of book you're going to put out which is going to be factual and tight and that, those books, I imagine, are they're just difficult. They're certainly difficult for me. And uh, yeah, but I, I came across, although I'll be too late, how important proofreaders are and editors and all the other words that sound the same, but they all do different things. Things like even Readsy online and these sort of groups online that you can find these people that are into animals and they've proofread all these really top science books. It's like, bloody hell, you did that. And so you can get them to help you along and they really are helpful. I discovered that way too late. Only in the last year, wow. three hundred and fifty wow. days I had with them. But but um, before that, I was just trying to get you like you know say here's a chapter, Nick. Here's a chapter, Ben. Uh, it's so hard for you guys to sit down and read fifty pages of a chapter with a red pen. I mean, it's not easy uh -huh. for anyone to do. So, but you can get professionals to help you now uh, online, and you can get them really into your field. So I regret not using them for the whole process and, and trying to do it myself. Which so that might make it easier. If you, if you, you should do it, Nick. You yeah. you would. You you should do it. You should get your thoughts down. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to look at how what the type of book. Yeah, I. I yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. But you're safe. Let's not for now. stress the guy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You know, we've we've talked a lot, and for those of you who want to hear just a few moments more, why don't you join us over on a bit on the side over on Patreon? Uh, that's yeah. Nick coined that phrase, so I'm going to give it to well, him. That, no, okay. I didn't uh, actually. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> he did. it's bots. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to see RPM bots, not those sort yeah. of bots. Okay, well, over on on the side, Patreon. Join, join us uh, over on Patreon just for a few minutes more. It's been great to see yeah. you guys. Don't forget, you can catch up with us on all of your live stream podcasts. Um, uh, companies from Amazon all the way through to Apple. Uh, so please, you know, do pick us up on those. Um, if you like what we do, you know, be sure to share us. That would be great. Yeah, uh, sharing. So, sharing is caring, guys. Wonderful. All well, of those. There you go, guys. You, Thank you very much. Love it, Nick. Yeah, no, brilliant. Jane, Jane, yeah, Jane, Nick. Jane Eastwood is saying how to look so young. There you go, Nick. You're on fire. Uh, that's very kind of you, that's Jane. Nice Your check is in the post. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a pleasure. Thanks very much for that, Nick. That was cool. Loved it.